Enron filed for bankruptcy. Ken Lay has quit as Enron's chairman and CEO. 38 counts of fraud and conspiracy. Because of his close connection with infamous Enron, Arthur Anderson, one of the most prestigious and biggest accounting firms in the world, who brought in $9.3 billion in revenue, was caught on a scandal and was found guilty by the US Supreme Court for shredding evidentiary documents about Enron's criminal activity. Arthur Anderson, a global behemoth, employing over 85,000 people in 84 countries, went from being on the top of the accounting world to the bottom of the world, now having only 200 employees and losing its respect and reputation in the process. Arthur Edward Anderson was born into a poor family. From a very young age, Anderson started to work so he can support his family. Even though life was extremely harsh to him, he just kept on working. But something worse would happen to him, which would change his life forever. At the age of 16, both of his parents tragically passed away and he was left alone to fend for himself. As his parents were immigrants from Norway, now dead, Anderson felt lonely, anxious, and depressed than ever. In order to survive the rapidly growing American economy, he wants money and education. So he got a full-time job as his male boy and was attending his school at night. Arthur was a restless boy with a burning desire to make a difference in the world. He never gave up, rather he worked harder than ever. Eventually, his hard work would pay off. He graduated from a Kellogg school at Northwestern University with a bachelor's degree in business. Soon, he got a job as an assistant in Alice Chalmers, a machine manufacturing company for just $2.5 in wages in Chicago. While he was working, he did a CPA in his side and eventually became the youngest certified public accountant in his entire state of Illinois at the age of 23. The American economy slowly started to boom and many businesses started to grow. Seeing this opportunity, Anderson with Clarence Jelani opened an accounting firm named Anderson Delaney & Company. Both were young and full of energy, ready to conquer the accounting world. Their first customer was Joseph Schultz Brewing Company, which was once the largest producer of beer at the time in the US. Having a great, powerful customer as their first customer increased the trust and confidence of other companies on their accounting firm, and soon other US companies also became their clients. But in 1918, Clarence Delaney left the accounting firm and the name of the firm was changed to Arthur Anderson and Company. As Anderson practiced perfectionism from an early age, whatever he did, he always made sure that he did his very best. When he was a child, his mom always told him to think straight and talk straight. So Anderson's philosophy was to be straightforward and to offer the highest quality service to the customers. He also expected his employees to be a perfectionist like him. So he created a training program and trained every single employee on how to offer the best service to the customers. And this had a great impact on the accounting firm, as many companies in America came to his firm for accounting and auditing purposes. And this increased the reputation and made Arthur Anderson and Company a household name. People in the accounting industry always looked up to Anderson as a great example of honesty and high quality service. In 1940, Arthur Anderson and Company became one of the biggest and most trustful accounting firm not only in America but in the world and was racking in millions of dollars in revenue every single year. This not only really took his accounting firm to greater heights but also made Arthur Anderson a great person because of his Norwegian roots at the same year the country of Norway awarded Anderson with the Royal Norwegian Order of St. Olaf, which is the highest civilian honor awarded by the King of Norway for remarkable achievements on behalf of the country and humanity. But on January 10th, 1947, author Edward Anderson sadly passed away at the age of 61. His legendary accounting firm didn't slur on after his death, but rather grew bigger than he ever dreamt of. After his death, Leonard Spacek took over the accounting firm and during his tenure, and he took Anderson from 20th largest firm in the world to a leader among the top big eight. 
The coding firm was growing slowly and steadily and they were not only opening offices in the US but also around the globe. During the 1980s, they were expanding rapidly as the world economy grew faster than ever imagined. It was the age of acquisitions, mergers and corporate takeovers. With this rapid expansion came along billion dollar revenues. By the mid-1980s, the firm had 318 offices in 72 countries. But as the problem goes like, all good things must come to an end. As Anderson got bigger and bigger, and the executives and board members got more greedier and more greedier, the legacy of Arthur Anderson would soon be put to test. Enron was the seventh largest corporation in the US, valued at $70 billion. It took Enron 16 years to grow from $10 billion to $70 billion in assets and it took only 24 days to go bankrupt. Enron was losing hundreds of millions of dollars for years. The company executives didn't try to figure out why Enron was losing money. Rather, they were trying to hide their massive losses from their balance sheets. And he flashed out this chief financial officer of Enron created a scheme to use off-balance sheets special purpose vehicles, also known as special purpose entities, to hide Enron's mountains of debt and toxic assets from the investors and creditors. At that time, they hired Arthur Anderson to take care of their auditing, even though Anderson would have a reputation for the high standards and quality risk management didn't care about Enron's accounting despite their poor accounting practices. As Anderson offered a stamp of approval and signed off their corporate reports for years, this can actually shows that Anderson didn't do the job and were negligent too. In 2002, Anderson was charged by the Supreme Court for shredding tons of Enron's audit documents as Enron's energy traders accounting came under government scrutiny. As many know, Anderson recently settled a suit brought against them by the SEC for $7 million as a result of a failed audit at Waste Management Incorporated. The question arises, what was Arthur Anderson doing when Enron was cooking its books? But later, on May 31st, 2005, the Supreme Court unanimously reversed the Anderson conviction because of errors in the trial. The Supreme Court held that the instructions were too vague to allow a jury to find the obstruction of justice had occurred. Even though the case was reversed and Anderson won the case, the damage has already been done and they have lost their reputation and they lost almost all of their business dealings. But something worse was waiting for Anderson which would make them look even worse. Worldcom, the USA's second largest long distance telephone company at that time, became infamous for this massive accounting scandal. At that time, it was the largest corporate accounting fraud case in the US history. The SEC charged Worldcom a $2.25 billion settlement. The accounting firm which did auditing to Worldcom was none other than Arthur Anderson. The reason for the fall of Worldcom was they rapidly started to buy their competitors in order to gain more market share. They eventually gained more market share, but at what cost? This rapid expansion resulted in a major drop in the revenue and they were just wasting hundreds of millions of dollars in expenditures. In order to hide its massive losses, Worldcom inflated net income and cash flow by recording expenses as investments, reporting it as a profit of $1.4 billion instead of a net loss of $1.4 billion in the first quarter of 2002. Even though Arthur Anderson knew wrongdoings of the Volcom executives, they didn't care. Some good Samaritan Volcom executives were giving Anderson memos about the bad accounting practices and informed them that the company was inflating profits by improperly accounting for expenses, but they didn't care. Later, a class action lawsuit was filed against Anderson by the investors of Volcom and they were agreed to pay $65 million to resolve the case. As the court says, once the gold is gone forever. Once Arthur Anderson was one of the biggest global behemoth, employing over 84,000 people in 84 countries and generating over 9 billion dollars in revenue, and an accounting firm known for its ethics, great reputation, and honesty. But now everything is in shambles.